my screen is up. Okay, so some things that you might want to go back over that you haven't looked at in a while, right, are these eukaryote um, practice quizzes. Remember, they're not for points, but you could do them. Um, and then I've added a new one um, that's practice uh, staining ID, because one of the things you'll need to do on the practical is be able to identify what stain you're looking at and be able to interpret results. So in addition, what I have put up to help you in the exam, and I don't usually turn it on until class because people try to do it ahead of time. <laughs> so I just turned it on. Yeah, no, this is a real quiz. Notice it says quiz six. That's a real quiz that you can only take once. It's not timed, right? But what I suggest that you do is that you take it as if it's a real quiz. Don't look at your notes. Don't look at your book, right? See if you can answer all the questions. Then look at your notes to check. Once you click on it and submit it, it will show you the correct answers and your results once. It's uh, 12 questions. Some of them are half a point apiece, right? So, and again, it's on stuff from today's lab in the previous labs to help you make sure that you're ready for the exam. Does that make sense to everybody? So get it done, obviously, before the exam. If you click on it, it tells you, right? Complete after lab six as soon as possible before exam one. Answer all the questions in the quiz without looking at your notes or book. Then check your answers by looking at the notes before submitting the quiz. Look at your results after you submit the assignment. If you have questions, contact your instructor. So if you wait to take this the day before the test, it's going to make it really hard to be able to contact me if you're confused, right? So do this sometime this week, right? So that you have the opportunity that if you don't understand this stuff, and do that practice quiz first, right? The staining ID practice one first before you do this one, of course. This is a quiz, so only once, right? And it does count as an actual quiz great. I just didn't, I don't like to put times on my quizzes. I don't like the ticking clock. Some of us get really affected by that ticking clock. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't need to put that level of pressure on you, so I don't. Not in that instance. Okay, so as it relates to the exam, one of the things that I had posted for you guys was this document. Did anyone actually print that? You might want to take it out because we're going to go over it next. <laughs> so this is the staining ID. So you'll notice I've already put the key, right? So those of you guys that don't like to take notes, Remember, this is a color document, so you could flip through this online, right, and um, quiz yourself, kind of, you could say, and see it in color. But, of course, I'm going to show it in color, and these are the answers. And then I already turned on Lecture 6, which is relatively short. But we're going to go over Staining ID first. And I don't know why I'm clicking on it, because I already have it open on my computer. <laughs> So the uh, exam is going to cover what we're doing today as well. Okay. So one of the key things that you need to be able to do, other than remember all the eukaryotes, I highly suggest doing those practice quizzes, right? Again, even if you did them before, because remember, you got to be able to spell the names of those organisms, know the answers to those questions. So that's really going to help you out. The other thing you're going to need to be able to do is identify stains. So which one is a simple stain and which one is a negative stain? Yeah, the negative has the background that's dark, right? So actually the title matches up. And then the simple stain has the cells colored, right? So background colored, cells not. Background not colored, cells colored for simple staining. Now, for simple staining, we use a particular type of dye known as a basic dye. What charge does a basic dye have? Positive. What charge do cells have? Negative. So the reason why we stain, right, we use a lot of basic dyes is because it stains the cell, right? So we have crystal violet, methylene blue, saffron, and all, all of these you will have used or will use today. 
Hopefully you didn't, and I don't think anybody picked up the wrong dies today, by the way, on your gram stain. Good job. Everyone should pat themselves on the back, because you guys really did an excellent job today. I'm really proud of you guys. So, um, so we already said they're positive, right? So cell's negative, dye is positive. So what do we know about these charges? Why do the cells get stained? Opposites attract, right? Opposite charges attract. For here, we use acidic dyes. They have what charge? Negative. And what are some acidic dyes we've used? Congo red. What's the one you see in this picture? Nigrazine, right? And eosin is another one, but we don't use it in this lab. But it was in your homework, right? These are negative, as we said. So they stain the background. Why? Right. Negative cell, negative dye, those like charges repel each other. Now I know, oh, I didn't give you back your quizzes, did I? I started to and I didn't. Okay, I will do that. Um, remind me when I get towards the end of this, because one of your best reviews for the, this exam is your quizzes. <laughs> and um, I don't think I went over the quiz before and I had a lot of questions on it, and I want to make sure that we go over that. So... Um, Dig that out if you want your last quiz, and I'll hand back the one from last week. As well as I'm going to grade the quizzes while you guys are working today from today and hand it back to you today so you have it to study. So let's review what you wrote on your quiz today. <laughs> so what was the first stain you were supposed to use for a minute? Crystal violet, because you started with the heat-fixed emulsion. At, you didn't have to write it out every time, but you need to at least write on there that after every step, what did you need to do? Rinse with water, right? So you could have wrote it out after each step, or you could have done, like I've done before too, and said that, you know, repeat this step after every stain. So, oh, I already answered it. The next step was iodine for one minute. Then, of course, rinse with water, right? And then we decolorize with what? Nope. Not 10 percent. 95 percent ethanol, which is an alcohol. Yes. I agree with you on that. Drop-wise until the drops go from a dark purple to a light purple, right? Over a paper towel. Most of you guys I saw doing that, a few guys bordered on or over decolorized, right? Did it for too long. And that was the step I was trying to warn you about, right? When I said there's not a lot of bacteria, so you weren't going to have to do it very long. That was the step, okay? Because that's the only one where time can vary, right? Based on the number of cells you have on the slot. So then we rinse with water, and we counter stain with what? Safranin. And that gave us our gram negatives. You blot dry, and then you observe under oil immersion. And you guys did, again, a really good job today with the microscopes. So um, we had our meeting yesterday. I think we came to a consensus that for the uh, practical exam next week, remember I said you guys would have to do something. Um, you're going to have to do an aseptic transfer. And remember, it's extra credit. But if you at least do it, I will give you a bonus point, right? Because I want to see how long it would take for an entire class of students to go through. And you're just going to do from slant to slant. Right? You're going to aseptically transfer bacteria from a slant to another slant, like you guys do, have been doing for weeks now, right? Uh, making sure you follow through all the steps. So I'll have a checklist, right, and I'll check off, right, each one of the steps. Um, so the other thing I'm going to have you do is um, focus the microscope, because I think some of you guys are still struggling on that, too. <laughs> So, um, and it, it'll, it'll be a, uh, a prepared slide so it can be wiped off and reused and stuff. Uh, might even just do this one right here. <laughs> Good old mycobacteria that you guys have to do today. Okay. Um, gram stain. So what color are those cells in this first picture? They're purple. What dye made them that color? Crystal violet. So we say they're gram positive because they stayed purple, right? Oops. 
well, obviously the pink, right, which is a lighter shade of red. What stain? Remember, a Congo red is an acidic dye. It stains the background, right? So what's our other red dye? Saffronic. And therefore, these guys are gram negative. What shape are these cells? Now, shape is the individual. I'm, I'm, when I'm asking, I'm talking about an individual cell. Cocci. But the arrangement is tetrads, right? That group of four. Like you see in this picture as well, right? You see the tetrads? That arrangement. What about here? What shape? Bacillus is the proper term, but what do most of us say? We say rod for the individual cell. And then what arrangement are you seeing here? Diplo, right? But what are you seeing here? Streptobacillus, right? This would be diptobacillus, this would be strepto. When you guys get your unknowns, whatever you see is the most complicated, right? A chain would be the most complicated right? This one you see tetrads over and over again, so that would be the, the arrangement. This one's kind of tricky. What do you guys think? Well, they're definitely cocci, right? But what do you think the arrangement is? What do you see the most of? Diplococci. You see more pairs than anything else, right? See two? The pink. Do you guys see how you see lots of pairs more than anything? If you would go around and circle all the pairs, you'd see more pairs than anything else. Cocci. Yep, cocci. So diplococci. Good job, Hillary. She's like, I got it now. <laughs> all right. Right. So um, gram positive versus gram negative. So why do we see purple versus pink under the microscope. Right, positive ones have the thick peptidoglycan layer, negative have a thin peptidoglycan layer, and then they tend to have how many membranes? Two, right? So for gram positives, just one, right? And the cell membrane has like a gazillion different names. I always say cell membrane, yeah. But I, you guys do need to be aware of the other names that are out there, right? Like cytoplasmic membrane or plasma membrane, right? I'll always say cell membrane. So we already said that this layer is thick, right? And the name of that is peptidoglycan, and that's unique to bacteria, right? So this is something we do for bacteria. Oh, yeah, you'll see this diagram again on your quiz and on your... your yeah. You will see this diagram again, yes. And so notice I even color coded it, right? Gram positive purple, gram negative pink. No, but you definitely need to know peptidoglycan. That's one of your terms, right? Right? And that's that's the component. The thickness of that component determines whether we end up staying purple, right? Or ending up being pink. Right? No, you just need to know that this is what a gram-positive cell would look like, and this is what a gram-negative would look like. You need to be able to identify them. So for gram-negatives, right, it's the thin peptidoglycan layer, which is why they don't retain the crystal violet iodine, right? And they decolorize, they become clear, and then we stain them with saffron and then they're pink. So this guy has two membranes. The cell membrane, or any of the other names for a cell membrane, right? And what's this membrane called? That top one, the outer membrane. And remember, their peptidoglycan layer is thin, very thin. Okay, so capsule stain. Which one has a capsule? A. How do you know this? It's got a halo, right? It has a section between the cell and the background that's not stained. The capsule doesn't stain, remember. Why do we need to stain both the cell and the background?
you won't see the halo, right? Because if you just stain the cell, then the halo is going to blend in with the background because what did I say about the capsule? It does not, it doesn't stain, right? It's not charged. We can't get any of the stains to stick to it. So remember, we kind of do this in a two-step, right? We stain the background with the Congo red, and then we add the Menville's reagent, and the whole thing changes color. But the reason why we add the Menville's is to color the cell, right? So you will see the unstained capsule. And we know red, Congo red, just stains the background, right? We did a negative stain where we just stained the background and then you looked and the cells weren't stained, right? You'd have to do that additional step that we do for the capsule stain in order to see the cells, right? So in this one, there's no gap, right? In this one, you can tell I, it's a computer generated drawing I did, by the way. Uh, but I have another picture later on, right, that shows no capsule. So how do we know this is a capsule stain though? but there's no halo. This is a capsule stain, but the organism has no capsule. Excellent. The background and the cell is stained. That's how you know it's not a negative stain that you're looking at a capsule stain. But this one doesn't have the halo, so it doesn't have a capsule. That makes sense to you guys? With negative staining, just the background will be stained and your cells will be clear. That's an important distinction that you need to know. What are the two main functions, and you can say this in one word each, of the capsule? Protection is one. What did you say, Mike? Protection. What's the other one? Which doesn't do well for the glass slide, but in our bodies it... It sticks or adheres or attaches, right? <laughs> okay, so this is a staining procedure you're going to do today, okay? So what color would you say these cells are? This is the tricky one. They're kind of purple, kind of pink. It's a color referred to as fuchsia, which is kind of a purple pink. The dye that you're going to use today that creates that color, anyone know? So what's the first dye you're going to use in the acid fast stain? Look at your procedure. Carbofusion, right? And we're using a particular formula of carbofusion, right? Because we're going to use the Zeal and Nielsen method, commonly abbreviated ZN. Yeah, and again, fuchsia is in the name. Yep. So if they stain this color, right, and these bacteria that stain this have a particular characteristic in their cell wall. In addition to peptidoglycan, they have an acid. It was one of your terms for today. What is the acid? My. <laughs> My, my colic, my colic acid, right? My colic acid. And so for this, this is a differential stain. <laughs> y'all, don't make fun of her. We all get tongue tied. She did an awesome job because she knew it though. She knew it. And I bet she could spell it too. Um, so instead of saying positive or negative for this one, we typically say acid fast or non-acid fast. So if it stains with the primary stain and it stays stained, right, these would be considered acid fast. And this was your bonus on the quiz today, right? What does AFB stand for? Acid fast bacilli. So notice the shape. They're rod shaped. And because of that mycolic acid, um, no matter how hard you try, when you suspend them in water and you try to spread them out on a slide, they don't want to separate from each other. They clump up. So um, whether they actually, you know, you could say this is an arrangement or not, but it's definitely a characteristic of how they are arranged on the slide is this clumping, right, where they clump up. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so if you see rod-shaped bacteria and they're clumping up, there's a pretty good chance you're probably looking at an acid-fast bacilli. 
Now, we are not going to stain any acid fast bacilli today because they're all pathogenic. So we have pre-made slides for you to look at and see this color and this arrangement in these cells under the microscope. So those are right up here at front at the table. Yours, all your slides should come out if you do it correctly. They should all come out a nice bluish color like you see here, right? And we use, so they're, you know, it's hard to describe this color, right? Some people it's kind of a greenish blue or a bluish gray, right? Uh, we're going to use methylene blue. Other procedures call for the use of brilliant green as the, as the counter stain. Now we're going to use methylene blue. I think it does say that in your procedure, right? Do you guys have methylene blue down as your counter stain? Okay. So if they don't retain the carbofusion and we have to counter stain them with our methylene blue, they are said to be acid fast or non-acid fast. Which do you think? Well, we've already had acid fast, right? So the other choice is non-acid fast, right? So we don't usually say acid fast negative, but you can, right? Typically scientists say acid fast or non-acid fast. The other staining procedure you're gonna to do today is the endospore stain. And this is why we needed to use our bacillus. And this is why you should, if you haven't already, make a note of the date of that culture that you used, right? When was that culture made? There's a spot for it on your paper. We're going to use a particular method. There's a couple of different endospore staining methods out there. We're using the Schaefer-Fulton method. It should be last week, right? Yeah, 9.13. Right, the date of the sample you used. So what color is the endospore? What color would you say that is? No, the... The dot inside the pink. Blue, yeah, yeah. So this is, it's supposed to be green, right? But again, our dye, I find, is not like a true green, like a beautiful emerald green we're used to. It's kind of an aquamarine, you know, a bluish green color, right? Uh, the important thing is it's not red, right? So these are definitely going to stain, right, a, a, a discerning color. So what dye are we going to use in the endospore staining? So what do you have on your list for the procedure? Malachite green. <laughs> Malachite green. So the other thing is, is that on your list, right, depending on where the spore, if you were lucky, and we're probably not going to see this today, we're not going to see it still in the, in the sporangium in the mother spore, Mostly you're going to see the cells if you see them at all, and you're going to see the spores all by themselves, what we call free spores. Um, but if you happen to see one inside the cell, and I'm not going to test you guys on this under the microscope, it's like next to impossible um, <laughs> to find this, right? Sometimes we get lucky. Uh, and actually one of my students in my other class got really lucky that their capsule stain had an endospore within it. And it was really cool to see. And the only reason we knew it was an endospore because we knew it was the bacillus, right? And I know, we know already this is a spore former. This is our known. Um, so depending on where that spore is located within the mother cell, there's terminology that you wrote down for homework, right? So we have the choice between central, subterminal, or terminal. So where do you think this one classifies? Subterminal, right? It's not right smack in the middle because that would be central. It's not all the way at the end because that would be terminal. It's in between the center of the cell and the end of the cell. So this one would be subterminal. Good job. Now, this picture didn't come out the best color. I even tried to tweak it, but just didn't. 
we want yeah it looks orange but it's supposed to be like a, a reddish or color right I tried playing with it I still couldn't get it the color I wanted but do you see any spores in this picture no right because they should be a greenish blue and they should be smaller than the cells right because they're made within the cell oh okay <laughs> So no green structures, so no spores, right? Or no bluish green structures. Under what conditions, I don't remember if they ask you this on your homework, when do you think a bacteria is going to form endospores that can do it? Hmm? After five, they tell you to use five-day-old cultures, right? So how old are our cultures? Seven days. So do you think that's enough time? Yeah. Yeah. Five days or longer, right? At least five days, it says, right? So this is seven days. A week is seven days. Guess what they run out of in those seven days? Food. We starve them. And honestly, y'all, this culture in like two days starts producing endospores because it grows so fast, right? So we should definitely, like I said, see lots of spores today. So harsh conditions. In this case, we're starving them. Right? But, you know, other things that could be harsh, like lack of water, um, changes in temperature, gas thing, uh, whether there's not enough oxygen or too much oxygen, right? Anything that is not hospitable, right? Anything harsh or poor, if they can, they're going to form an endospore and protect themselves. So, you, again, important, you need to know what method we're using. Because there are other methods out there that use different dyes and different procedures, different steps to the procedure. So you must know we're using the Schaefer Fulton, so we should end up with red cells and greenish, bluish, right, aquamarine <laughs> endospores. Okay, so based on what we know and what we're continuing to learn, what do you see in this picture that would tell you what staining procedure the person did? This is the one we just saw, right? So we see red cells, right? And you also see what? The endospores even within the cells, right? So this is endospore stain, right? It's like Christmas, green and red. Special present. Now B, what do you see? This is a capsule stain, right? But do you see a capsule? No. And how did you know it was a capsule stain? The background stain and the cells are stained. Okay, so this next one. We've got two colors, right? Two different cell shapes. Let letter C. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> So a lot of you guys are saying gram stain, right? But what colors are we supposed to see for gram stain? Purple and pink. <laughs> oh, see that clustering? She's, she's, she's looking more detailed, right? You see how these are clustered up and they're kind of a purplish color, but not like a true purple, right? They're that fuchsia color. So you know you're, these are probably acid fast, right? And these are kind of blue now that you look at it, right? <laughs> So not gram stain, because we're not looking at true purple and pink, right? This is an acid fast stain. Yeah, the clumping of the acid fast bacilli. And you can kind of see some of them separated, right, where they're rod shaped. The next one's definitely gram, right, y'all? Pink and purple. And the last one, negative. And again, this is because the background is stained, but are the cells stained? No, they're clear, right? And then there's a whole lot of crud on this slide, too. But the, we know what bacteria look like now, right? So these rods we know is probably what they were looking at. The rest of this stuff, just crud on the slide. All right. This should be a walk in the park at this point, right? All right, let's see how quick we can go through it. Individual cell. One cell. 
one cell. Coxus. All the cells. Coxi. Oxi is plural, right? Okay. So one of these groups. One of them, diplococcus. If we're talking about all of them, diplococci. Okay. Individual cells are cocci shaped, but what arrangement are we looking at here? Tetrads. Forming a chain. Streptococcus. Right? If we saw more than one chain, streptococci. Okay. So a packet of eight sarcinia. Right? The I after the C makes it say S. Sarcinia. Clustering of cocci. Staphylococcus. These are rod shaped, but what's the term? Bacillus. Or if we're talking about all of them, bacilli. Just one of these. Diplo for the pair, right? Bacillus for the fact that it's rod. A chain of rods, streptobacillus, little curved rods, vibrios, right? Vibrios, plural, the standard plural we're used to for talking about all of them, vibrio for just one. So a rod with multiple curves to it. Spirillium, right? Or spirillia, if you're talking about more than one. They don't hold the characteristic shape this phenomenon is referred to as pleomorphism or being pleomorphic. And then this one, which was on your quiz, these are helical shaped spirochetes. Spirochetes. <laughs> so um, what's a good review? All the exercises, right? All your terms, you need to be able to spell them, go over them, do flashcards, whatever you need to do. And your quizzes, which I'll hand back those. I'll pause and hand back. So lots of practice for you guys, practice quizzes. No, not yet. I'm not done. Sadly, we're not done. It's only part one. <laughs> okay, so here's an example, right, of something you might see. So this organism would be set up under the microscope say aspergillus for one of the eukaryotes. So remember how I had all those set up for you? Obviously it's not going to be all of them, right? We're going to pick five or six organisms of the eukaryotes. But you got to know them all because you don't know which five or six I'm going to pick. You'll look at it on the microscope. You've got to tell me at least the first name, the genus name of what you're looking at. And then whatever the pointer is pointing to. What other structure, yep. Yeah? That's why there's those practice quizzes to help you out. And then any other question we might have asked you guys, right, in that homework packet as it relates to those organisms. So for instance, for aspergillus, we asked you what does it make, right? And so you need to know that it makes citric acid, right, um, or, and it's also used in making soy paste and soy sauce. You need to know all the steps to all the staining procedures. And why you see what you do, right? Why does gram positive end up coming out gram positive? Why is gram negative gram negative? Why is acid fast acid fast? You will need to be able to identify what staining procedure was used, right? So I'll put a slide up there and based on the colors, right? And maybe the, the, the cells in the case of acid fast will help you know that you're looking at the, an acid fast slide. Usually for a differential stain, I'm going to put both acid fast and non-acid fast on the slide, as well as for a gram stain, I put both of them on the slide. But then, too, I could just put purple ones, right, and say, is it gram positive or gram negative? If they're purple, they're what? Gram positive. So again, do those quizzes, practice quizzes, as well as the actual quiz six to help you prepare. And then for the spore stain that we're doing today in the acid fast, we're using a particular method. I promise it, I will make you spell out the names, but you do need to be able to recognize the names of these procedures, right? So it's the ZN, the Zeal and Nielsen method for acid fast staining, and we're using the Schaefer-Fulton for endospore stain.
So the other thing is, is you should know some of the characteristics of the organisms we've used. The good news for you guys is this list is much smaller than it used to be. So from mycobacteria tuberculosis, right, which you're, you're going to look at prepared slides, right? No one, we would not want to work at that organism. That's a BL3, respiratorily transmitted, as little as 10 bacteria will give you that infection. Yeah, we're not messing with that one. Although we used to work with another one that wasn't quite as pathogenic, but still pathogenic, so... No more mycobacteria. But all mycobacteria, right, we know are going to be what shape? Because we commonly abbreviate them AFB. Bacillus, right? Um, and they tend to clump together, right, whether that's a true arrangement or not. And then the reason why we look at these is they are always going to be acid fast, right? E. coli, we know its shape at this point, right? What shape is it? What does E. coli look like? It's a rod, right? It's a small rod. Does it form any type of groupings? No, it's what we call singular. It kind of stays off on its own. When you gram stained it, it should have came out pink. So it's gram negative. And the only organisms that come out acid fast are mycobacteria. So by default, right, our E. coli should come out acid fast or non-acid fast? Really? Only mycobacteria are acid fast. They should be non-acid fast or acid fast negative. So remember, the fact that it comes out pink tells you that E. coli has a very thin layer of peptidoglycan. In contrast, if you did micrococcus, we know what shape is the individual cells of micrococcus luteus. It's in the name. They're cocci, right? Or coxus, if you're talking about a single one. Right? What's their arrangement? This one had a really cool arrangement, right? This one's tetrads. And if you gram stain, it comes out purple, so it's gram positive and so its peptidoglycan layer is very thick and if we stain this one acid fast today what results should you get non-acid fast because it's not a mycobacteria none of them will stain acid fast if you do it right today staphylococcus epidermidis again its name tells you right so this one is individual shape is a coxus right and then we have that clustering, which is also the same thing as the genus name here, which is Staphylococcus. And they should also come out gram-positive if you actually have that culture. <laughs> and of course, there are another one you could stain today, and it should come out non-acid fast. Bacillus, this one is rod-shaped, right, by its name. But it also forms what arrangement? forms chains, right? So the name we would give to that is streptobacillus. If you were to gram stain this one, this is why I didn't have you guys gram stain this one. This one is purple, so it's gram positive. What special structure does it have and why are we using it today? It has a capsule, but today it has the endosp it produces endospores as well. And then, of course, it should come out non-acid fast should you choose to do that one. Though I don't think I put that one as a choice. We good? Under the microscope, I couldn't put one of these slides up and expect you to tell me that it's bacillus or micrococcus or stuff like that. Although micrococcus, you know, you have a pretty good idea if you're seeing tetrads based on what we know. But, y'all, these are just the ones we've been working with. There are others out there that you can't just go by shape in a few tests to determine, right? As you guys will find out when I give you your unknowns, you're going to run multiple tests to eventually narrow it down to your unknown. But you should know the characteristics of the organisms you've been working with. So there's a question on um, that quiz online to help you with that.